Tao Ren, Tao Chen and Tao Hong were vital military generals who served their older second cousin Tao Tao from early on. Tao Hong famously saved his lord when they lost the Battle of Xiangyang against Xu Rong. Tao Ren is most known for his defensive capabilities, despite being described as mediocre by Zhu Huan. His greatest accomplishment was his defence of Fan Castle against Guan Yu. Tao Ren's younger twin brother, Tao Chun, was known for leading the Tiger and Leopard Cavalry, an elite mounted unit, but he was not as skilled in battle as his brother. They were all born in Pei Commandery. The twins were born in the year 168, and Tao Hong was born a year later in 169. Hong's uncle served as the prefect of the Masters of Writing, and due to this connection, he gained an appointment as a county chief in his early life. Ren and Chun's father and grandfather also both served in the Han government. When their father died, they went to live with another family, until Ren turned 13 and was able to inherit his old family estates. The twins were wealthy, and had hundreds of servants and retainers. Ren's behaviour was undisciplined, but he excelled at horseback archery and hunting. It was only after he became a general that he learned to respect laws and regulations. The townsfolk regarded Chun highly because he was strict, rule-abiding and a fair leader. He was well read in literature, and also respected scholars, so many of them flocked to serve under him. With the growing chaos throughout the land, many great heroes started rising up, and Tao Ren was one of them. He quietly collected a following of over a thousand young men, then patrolled the area between the Huai and Si rivers. When Tao Chun was 17, he was called to Luo Yang as a gentleman of the Yellow Gate, and served the Han Imperial Court as a spokesman for Emperor Ling. Two years later in 187, he followed Tao Tao East to recruit soldiers, then in 189 he helped fight against the Yellow Turbans. Around the year 190, Tao Tao raised an army to join the anti Dong Zhuo coalition. Tao Ren, his 1000 strong militia and Tao Hong joined up with Tao Tao, Tao Chun and the others at this time. Ren held the rank of major of a separate command, but was actually an acting sharp edge colonel. When they were routed by Dong Zhuo's general Xu Rong, their master had lost his horse on the battlefield, so Tao Hong got off his and said, The world can do without Tao Hong, but it can't do without you. He followed Tao Tao on foot to safety, until they reached a river too deep to wade through. Hong swam around until he found a boat, where after they escaped to Tao Tao's hometown and to safety. Hong went to visit his friend Chen Wen, and was able to acquire 2,000 of his best soldiers. Then he went to Danyang Commandery, where he recruited another 1,000 from Zhu Xin. He became one of Tao Tao's most loyal officers ever since he brought his 4,000 soldiers back to meet up with him. Tao Ren was in charge of the cavalry, and led the vanguard for the invasion of Zhu province in 194. He led his unit away from the main force to defeat Liu Yu, before reuniting with Tao Tao, where they scored a major victory against Dao Xian at Peng City. Tao Tao's army went on to seize four more cities, so Dao Xian dispatched forces to aid the counties, but Tao Ren's cavalry attacked and defeated them. Meanwhile, famine had broke out in Yan province. Zhang Miao and Chen Gong defected over to Lu Bu who started a rebellion in Tao's base. Tao Hong led a vanguard force to retake Dongping and Fan counties, then seized stockpiled grain from Lu Bu's grasp, which enabled him to feed his troops. When Tao Tao's main force returned, they defeated the rebels and recaptured over half a dozen counties. Tao Ren led a separate unit to reclaim Zhu Yang County, and captured Liu He alive. Wherever Tao Tao fought, Tao Ren performed meritorious service and was appointed as administrator of Guangyang for his work. Tao Hong was commissioned as a Soaring Eagle General and later promoted to General of the Household who spreads martial might. Ever since Tao Chun followed Tao Tao to raise troops against the Yellow Turbans, he fought in several battles against rival warlords. Tao Ren never exercised his jurisdiction at Guangling because Tao Tao appreciated his skills, so he kept him by his side at Shu City. When Tao Tao went to acquire the Emperor in 196, he first sent Tao Hong to fetch him, but he was blocked by Dong Cheng and Yuan Shu's subordinate Chang Nu. Two months later, Tao personally led his forces to receive Emperor Xi'an, then relocated him to Zhu City two months after that. When the new imperial capital was established, Tao Tao was appointed as the Minister of Works by Emperor Xi'an. Tao Hong was appointed as a Counselor Remonstrant. Tao Chun became a consultant and military advisor to the Minister of Works sometime between 196 and 205. Like his brother, Tao Ren was also given the civil position of consultant to the Minister of Works, but he actually continued to command the cavalry. As Tao Tao was the Minister of Works, he set an example by keeping records of the accounts of all the officials, including his. When he learned his personal wealth was equivalent to that of Tao Hong's, he remarked, How can my personal wealth be the same as Zi Lian's? 
Tao Hong was wealthy but stingy. When Tao Pi was still a youth, he once asked Tao Hong for a loan but he was rejected. When Pi became Tao Tao's heir apparent, he asked Hong again, this time for a donation of a hundred rolls of silk, but once more he rejected. Tao Pi held a grudge against him for this, and only got revenge years later after he became emperor. At present, some of Tao Hong's retainers who broke the law were soon arrested by Man Chong, who served as the prefect of Zhu County. Tao Hong wanted them released, but his pleas were rejected. When Tao Tao was informed by Hong, he summoned the official who was overall in charge to come and see him. Man Chong thought Tao Tao was going to pardon the criminals, so he quickly had them executed instead. Tao Tao was pleased when he heard of this and remarked, isn't this what an office holder should do? The following year, in 197, Tao campaigned against Shang Ziyu. Tao Ren was given command of a separate unit to raid the counties around Wan, and he returned with over 3,000 captured men and women. Shang Ziyu surrendered, but quickly launched a surprise attack and defeated Tao Tao's forces. They were attacked again the following year after another failed attack, but during the retreat this time, they were also cut off by Liu Biao's troops, which caused Wei's morale to plummet. Tao Tao became impressed with Tao Ren when he saw him encourage and inspire the soldiers and helped lift their spirits. They were eventually able to defeat Zhang Xiu's cavalry in a counter-attack and managed to escape. In May of 199, Tao Ren was dispatched across the Yellow River to attack Sui Gu who was leading troops to join up with Yuan Shao. Sui Gu left two of his officers to defend, whilst he continued to escape. Tao Ren ignored the defenders and continued on to Sui Gu's position. They fought and destroyed his unit and he was killed, then the other defenders went on to surrender to Tao. When Tao Tao was stuck in a stalemate at Guangdu, Yuan Shao secretly sent Liu Bei to harass the county south of Shu City. The populace soon became disturbed by Liu Bei's reputation and joined in his support. Ren said to Tao Tao, The southern districts know that our army is facing a crisis, and they realise we cannot bring them help. As Liu Bei comes with a strong force, it's quite understandable that they turn away from us. Liu Bei, however, has not long held command over Yuan Shao's troops, and he has not had time to get used to them. If we attack him, we can defeat him. Tao Tao was pleased, and so he sent Ren to lead the cavalry unit to deal with Liu Bei. He found success in battle when he killed Liu Pi, then defeated Liu Bei. He settled the counties in revolt, then returned to Guangdu. Han Jun was sent to block the western road and prevent Tao Ren's return, but he was caught off guard at Mount Ji Luo and badly defeated by Ren. Han Jun's defeat here made Yuan Shao indecisive, and from that point on, he did not dare separate his forces. Ren went on to accompany Xu Huan to capture Yuan Shao's baggage train, then burnt some of his food supplies. When Tao Tao led his forces to the enemy supply depot at Wu Chao, Yuan sent Zhang He and Gao Lan to attack the Wei main camp in an attempt to divert Tao Tao back. But the attackers were already frustrated with Yuan Shao, so they ended up defecting to Tao Hong instead, who had been left in charge of defences. He was initially suspicious about the surrender, but Shun Yu convinced them that they were sincere. Following the victory against Yuan Shao, campaigns were launched against his sons to unite the rest of northern China. Tao Tao had given orders at the Siege of Hu Pass that all the defenders would be buried alive, but for three months the city did not fall. Tao Ren spoke up in protest. Besiegers must show the gatekeepers that there was hope of survival. When you announced that they would all be killed, it forced the defenders to defend to the last. Should the city be well fortified and have a good supply of grain, then attacking it will cost many soldiers, and waiting for surrender will take a long time. To attack a fortified city against soldiers who expect to die is not a good plan. Tao Tao agreed with this, and so took back his order, and the city soon surrendered. In early 205, Tao Chun led the Tiger and Leopard Cavalry against Yuan Tan during the Battle of Nan Pi. After they lost heavy casualties, Tao Tao wanted to retreat, but Chun stopped him and said, We've travelled a long distance to attack the enemy. While we can't defeat them at the moment by advancing, we'll definitely lose our might if we retreat. Besides, we're already deep in enemy territory, and won't be able to last long. The enemy has become complacent after their initial victory, and we've become fearful. We can use our fear to overcome their complacency and defeat them. Tao Tao was convinced, and so continued to press the attack. Soldiers who were part of the Tiger and Leopard unit killed Yuan Tan and cut off his head during the battle. Two years later, at the Battle of White Wolf Mountain, Tao Chun led the Tiger and Leopard unit once more. They captured the Wuhuan leader Ta Dun this time, who was later executed by Zhang Liao. Chun was rewarded as a village Marquis, which was formed with 300 households. Tao Tao's son, Tao Zhang, also participated in the campaign against the Wu Huan. His brother, Tao Pi, once wrote to him here, Shouldn't you follow the rules and regulations in the same way Tao renders? Northern China was unified in 207, so Tao Tao made plans to invade Liu Biao in the south. 
Leading up to the following year, initial minor invasions led by Zia Hadun were repelled by Liu Biao's vassal Liu Bei. Tao Hong participated in the campaign into Jing, and defeated Liu Biao's subordinates in battles at Wu Yang, Yin Yi, Du Yang and Bo Wang. When Tao Tao reached Wan Cheng, Liu Biao had died of illness, and his sons soon surrendered over to Wei. Liu Bei was forced to flee south, but Tao Shun led his troops in pursuit of him at the Battle of Changban. Here he captured two of Liu Bei's daughters, much of his equipment, and most of the fleeing troops who were soon recruited. When Tao Tao occupied Jing's provincial capital Jiangling, Tao Chun headed back to Xiao County. It's not known if he participated in the Battle of Red Cliffs. Tao Ren was stationed at Jiangling and promoted to the general who subdues the south. Wei forces were defeated at Qi Bi and the Wu forces used their momentum to lay siege to Nan Commandery. Tao Tao retreated north and left Tao Ren and Xu Huang to defend the strategic location. Zhou Yu's tens of thousands of men surrounded the city, whilst Gan Ning's men marched an indirect route and captured Yi Ling, putting pressure on Tao Ren's rear. The Wei relief force to Yi Ling was defeated by the timely arrival of Zhou Yu, who soon led his vanguard of several thousand men back towards the city. Tao Ren was watching from the castle walls and sent Niu Jin with 300 men to engage the Wu army. Lacking in numbers, they were quickly surrounded, and Chief Clerk Chen Jiao turned pale at the sight of the situation. Alternate accounts of how Tao Ren rescued Niu Jin exist. One claims that unlike what everyone thought, by the time he only had a hundred men left, Niu Jin managed to create havoc around the Wu camp. Tao Ren surged with courage when he saw how much damage could be done with just 300 men. He ordered every troop in the city to prepare to go into battle, despite Chen Jiao and others attempting to dissuade him. Tao Ren ignored them all and bravely charged the enemy formation with every soldier under his command. They broke the enemy ranks and rescued Niu Jin. He even returned to rescue the remaining soldiers who were still trapped in the Wu formation, then Sun Quan's forces retreated. Tao Tao was very impressed when he heard about this incident, so Tao Ren's Marquis title was changed. Another account claims Tao Ren was filled with guilt and thought himself responsible for Niu Jin's plight. He yelled for his horse against the will of Chen Jiao and others who argued the reasons for why victory would not be possible. Tao Ren remained silent as he donned his armour and mounted his horse. He handpicked several dozen elite warriors and led the charge out of the city. Chen Jiao thought that he would halt when his cavalry was stopped by a moat a hundred meters from the Wu encirclement, but Tao Ren urged his steed to press on and it leapt over. Ren's cavalry made several passes through the mob, freeing some of the trapped soldiers each time. Although some of his forces were killed, Niu Jin was rescued and the Wu vanguard retreated. When Tao Ren returned to the city, Chen Jiao cried out, General Tao truly is godlike. Wu forces had laid siege to Jiangling for over a year, and many had died on both sides. Tao Ren thought he could secure victory when Zhou Yu was hit by an arrow. As the Wu forces retreated, Ren launched a counterattack, but it backfired, and he was defeated and had to flee north, despite Zhou Yu's injury. Upon his return, he was demoted from general who subdues the south, but enfiefed as a village Marquis. In 210, Tao Chen died in his hometown at the age of 40 from natural causes. His elite mounted Tiger and Leopard unit had a highly selective recruitment process. Only soldiers who had at least a hundred men under them were eligible. Even Tao Tao himself found it difficult to lead a unit of such experienced men, which is why he chose Tao Chun. He was able to gain the trust and respect of those elite soldiers, so after his death, people questioned who the new candidate to replace him would be. Tao did not choose anyone. Who is comparable to Tao Chun? Am I not the only person capable of leading this unit? The next year, Tao Tao dispatched forces to annex Hanzhong, which incited the Liang province warlords to revolt. Tao Ren was appointed as general who stabilises the west, and commanded the defence force in the Tong Pass area until Tao Tao reached the front line. When the Liang rebels were defeated, Tao Ren returned east to fight Su Bo and Tian Yin, who had rebelled. He was promoted to a chief controller over seven armies, and used them to fulfil his duty. Next, he unofficially resumed the duties of general who subdues the south and garrisoned at Fan Castle to guard Jing province. When Hu Yin of Wan rebelled, Tao Ren led several armies against him and beheaded him. Immediately, he was officially reinstated as general who subdues the south and ordered to continue to garrison at Fan. In preparation for Liu Bei's invasion of Hanzhong in the winter of 217, Zhang Fei, Ma Chao and Wu Lan garrisoned at Xiabian County. Tao Hong was sent to resist them, with Tao Ziyu serving as his advisor. Ziyu had earlier been told by Tao Tao, you may be an advisor, but you're actually the commander. 
When the orders came through to Hong, he delegated his leadership role over to Tao Ziyu anyway, who then found victory. Wu Lan was defeated, and his deputy Ren Kui was killed in combat. Wu Lan was later killed by a Di tribal chieftain, and Zhang Fei was forced to withdraw. Tao Hong threw a party to celebrate, where he had scantily dressed prostitutes dancing on drums to entertain everyone. When Yang Fu reprimanded him for the indecency at the banquet, Hong called off the performance and invited Yang Fu back to his seat. In 219, Guan Yu attacked Fan Castle. Yu Jin was sent by Tao Ren to lead the Seven Armies, but the unfortunate flooding of the Han River obliterated the Wei forces. Tao Ren was left with only a thousand men and horses garrisoned at Fan Castle, which herself was badly affected by the flooding. Only the tops of the walls were left dry. Guan Yu was able to sail his boats right up to the city walls, and his encirclement was several ships deep. Communications to outside the city were severed, any long-term provisions had been destroyed by the water, and relief forces were not expected. Some spoke of abandoning their position, but Man Chong, who had arrived earlier, agreed with Tao Ren that its strategic value was too important to abandon. Man Chong sacrificed his white horse, and then went about the city rallying the men, showing them that he was willing to die to hold the city. They held their ground until the waters receded, and Xu Huang arrived with reinforcements. His men dug tunnels into the city, and fired arrows over the walls to open up communications once again. Tao Ren and Xu Huang were able to lift the siege and Guan Yu retreated back to Xiangyang. With Wu forces pressuring Guan Yu from the south, Tao Ren held a war council and said, Guan Yu is threatened and anxious, we can chase him and take him. But Zhao Yan thought it was best to let Wu handle him, and so Ren didn't carry out his idea. When Tao Pi succeeded his father, both Tao Hong and Ren were promoted, and had their marquis states increased. Ren was placed in charge of military affairs in Jing, Yang, and Yi provinces. Tao Ren and Chun's late father also had ten houses appointed to guard his grave by Tao Pi, before Tao Ren was stationed at Wan Castle. Chen Xiao was sent by Sun Quan to seize Xiang Yang, but Tao Ren was sent with Xu Huang to stop him. They drove him away, and relocated the populace from the south side of the river to the north, so they'd be better protected. Tao Ren was soon stationed at Lin Yang, and promoted to the Grand Marshal. He was given command of the armies along the Wu River, and also made responsible for the defence of Hei Fei, so he went there to garrison his troops. In 222, Tao Pi launched his invasions against Wu. Tao Ren led tens of thousands of troops to attack Rushu Fortress, a fortified harbour, which was constructed earlier under the advice of Lu Meng. Tao Ren started by spreading false news that his target was actually a nearby city, so Zhu Huan split his forces to deal with this threat, and so was left with only 5,000 troops in Rushu. We occupy a high-walled fortress, which sits north to a river and south of a mountain. This situation benefits us. We shall prevail over our tired invaders. We will win a hundred battles if a situation like this recurs a hundred times. We should have no fear even if Tao Pi comes here personally, so why should we worry about the likes of Tao Ren? The Wei army was 35 kilometers away when Zhu Huan realized he had been tricked, so he tore down the flags and put away the drums to give a false sense of weakness, which Tao Ren in turn fell for. Ren didn't lead the armies from the front, instead commanding support troops from the back. His son, Tao Dai, was given 10,000 troops to attack the fortress head on, whilst Chang Diao was sent to a river island where many families of the Wu soldiers lived. Tao Ren ignored the advice of Jiang Ji, who knew about Wu's upstream advantage they held on the water, and as a result, the Wei forces on the river were heavily defeated. They were caught off guard and then fell into traps. This led to Cheng Diao's death and Wang Shuang being captured. Meanwhile, Tao Dai's attack against Ru Xu went poorly, so he burnt down his own camp and withdrew. Another account says Xu Huan repelled Tao Dai's attack outside Ru Xu fortress, managed to infiltrate the enemy ranks and burnt down their camps himself. On the 16th of June, 223, Tao Ren passed away. He was best remembered for his bravery and courage, and he was posthumously titled Loyal Lord of Chen. When Tao Zhen returned from the campaigns against Wu in 224, he was invited by Tao Pi to Wu Zhi's residence, who was ordered to host a banquet in his honour. Tao Hong and Wang Zhong had earlier egged Wu Zhi on once when they said, If you want to make Tao Zhen admit that he is fat, you'll have to show that you are thin. Wu Zhi instructed actors who were fat and thin to put up a skit which made fun of Tao Zhen. He drew his sword at them and said, I'll kill whoever dares to mock me. When Tao Hong's retainers were later arrested for committing crimes, Tao Pi also had Hong imprisoned to await execution under accusations of negligence. 
Many ministers tried to dissuade him, but Tao Pi refused to listen. Tao Zhen told Tao Pi, If Tao Hong is to be executed, he'll definitely say something nasty about me. Pi replied, I'll deal with him myself, why do you need to worry? Empress Dowager Gubian reminded her son of Tao Hong's deeds at Xiangyang, and also threatened Pi's wife to be removed as empress if Tao Hong was not spared. Only after numerous interventions from Tao Pi's wife did he reluctantly free Tao Hong from prison, but he had all of his positions and titles stripped. Dao Gobian had to intervene once more to get Tao Hong's properties returned to him, but he was still not restored to his former positions. When he learned he had been pardoned, Tao Hong was so overjoyed he expressed his remorse and said he would spend the rest of his life behind the walls of his home. Hong didn't have to wait long to be rehabilitated by Tao Rui, because Tao Pi passed away just a few years later. He was promoted by Tao Rui and made Marquis of Lecheng with a thousand taxable households. He lived out his remaining years without being demoted or falling from grace until he passed away in the year 232. He was posthumously titled Marquis Gong, which one could be called for being able to correct past mistakes. In Tao Hong's case, he changed his snobbish attitude after being punished. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.